the movies together. Joe wakes Tom and they had a big fight on the way in. How in many ways can you keep Joe and Tom in that like way to say? So that Joe and Tom don't get sick. Okay? It can be one of these. Um, so it's really nothing like we've seen before. If one of the units that's also found in 30 dash two. Okay, so if you're in this and you're like, holy moly, I'm so far above my it's so far above my head, I have no idea what's happening. At least when you move to 30 dash two, you'll have a unit where it's later on in the season. Okay? And it goes slower. If you're someone who's in your 50 to 65 range coming out of 20 dash one, um, and you start flying with it, um, remember you only have a certain amount of time to the full of four years. Or you might be like, hey, I feel like I'm flying. I'll do my homework this morning. I'm a flounder. I think it's a good one. Okay? So, here, the fundamental counting principle is consider a task made up of several stages. If the number of choices for the first stage is A, and the number of choices for the second stage is B, and the number of choices for the third stage is C, etc., then the number of ways that task can be completed is A times B times C times how many more tasks are. It's called the fundamental counting principle. It'll make sense when you're not using it So we have a toy manufacturer, and this uh, wooden toy is three parts. So here's the three parts that make the one toy, right? So it has three parts that can make one thing, so it's the fundamental counting principle. First off, we're going to do a tree diagram that has to work. So, part one, the top part can be red, white, blue, or pink. Part two, the middle part can be orange, purple, or black. Part three, the bottom part can be yellow or green. Determine how many different colored toys can be produced using a tree diagram. So, tree diagram, I find people um, do them wrong every single time, and I need to do this too. Go to do part one and then split part two, split part three, split. What you do with these parts is you write them along the top. So I'm going to write part one first. And my options for part one are red, white, blue, or pink. Now, in between each option, red, white, blue, or pink, leave a space because you're going to have little branches off of that. And if you don't leave spaces, you're going to get the key too tight by the time you get to part two. Okay? So we're going to be red. Red space, white, red space, blue, okay. Like I said, all the notes are filled in online, so you can see more about the how you're doing stuff. So then our next part is part two. We're going to write the one down, part two. We have orange, purple, or black for part two, right? So if part one was red, if it was red, and we had a red top, it could have a, you see how I'm branching off, bring the tree, and then you're going to branch off again. So you can have orange, purple, or black. Okay, oh, no, 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 sorry. Orange, purple, or black. So I'm going to start switching because I will. And then um, off of white, we can have orange, purple, or black. And off of blue. So actually, if this toy only had two parts, the top and the middle, um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different toys. To so be red and orange, red and purple, red and black. White and orange, white and purple, white and black, right? We can stop here. But we don't stop here. There's a part three. So the bottom part could be yellow or green. Yellow, green, green, and blue. Yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. 
How many points total can you take this? Well, technically, this counts all the parts of right? Because that's the new setup. You would be red top, orange, middle, yellow bottom. Red top, orange, middle, green bottom. Red top, purple, middle, yellow bottom. Red top, purple, green bottom, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. So we have 24 different points. Sorry, I have to write fast because I write fast and can't work really hard. I write long and can't work very slow. Right. So I have to write the same color. Okay, now, how do things remain? There's not the absolute work that I tell you off, right? What happens if I had a uh, hundred different options of color for part one, and then 50 different color options for part two, like that would be the most horrendous scale I've ever had to have to pay for it. Okay? So there's a lot of meaning your way. That's in the fundamental counting principle comes in. It says that if there's different parts and you need each part to make the whole, you can use fundamental counting principle. So we have part one. And we have part two. Now we can use the fundamental counting principle if we use the word and between them. If I need all of those things to make it. So this is part one, and I need part two, and I need part two to make the whole point, correct? Should I have part one or part two and still make the point? No, I need to have each part. Keep in here. Whenever you read the word and, or you say the word and, Whenever you use oh, oh. Whenever you use the word and guys, that means multiply. So I need this part and part two and part three. So I'm going to multiply. If you use the word or, it's add. If I know and and add, you think would go together, but and doesn't go that way. Do you know what? Do you know what? And, multiply, or, add. So if you use the word or, you don't go inside those well. That means to add. So if you use this part or this part or this part, then you add. Right? Then no longer would be the fundamental counter principle. The fundamental counter principle is just the multiply thing. Okay? How many options do we have for part one? How many different colors? Part two, Daniel, how many different colors? Three. And part three, now. Yeah. So if I go four times three times two, times four. Because that's all we did, really. We kept each one of these and multiplied by three and then multiplied by three. Four. So here, in example two, we have a school cafeteria offer sandwiches made in the form of ham, cheese, or corned cheese, or egg on white, whole wheat, or rye bread. How many different sandwiches can be made? Do we need both those parts to make the whole sandwich? Yes. Do we need parts to make the whole one? We do. And we'll have to so here's your filling. And here would be your bread. Do you need the filling and the bread to make the sandwich, or do you need the filling or the bread to make the sandwich? And, so it's 
to multiply and to turn the transfer to multiply. How many different chains are there? Like four? Six. Down? One, two, three, four. How many different brands can I? Oh, you guys are going to talk. Okay, so Hannah, not banana. Hannah? Oh, Hannah. Okay. 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 Okay.
had to do it quickly. It'd be like um, you're lining up cars, and the red car has to be the first car. So now you're just switching it, right? You're no longer just lining up cars. The red one has to be first. Or the tall fence will stand in the middle. Or it has to start with the concert first. Or it has to start with the ballot if you want. Okay? Once you say I'm restricting, you have to do the restriction first. So, in how many ways can five different models, what the heck, why did we even put that? That's very, that's very important to read Five different models. That means that they're all different looking. So, one could be um, a Ford Mustang car and one could be a Honda Civic. Even if those cars are painted the exact same black color, I promise you, you can tell the difference between them. Okay? If these were um, five of the same models of black car, that's a totally different game. That means you have repetition. That would mean you have five cars that are repeated. It looks exactly the same. So, why does that matter? Because if I put these five cars in front of you, like this, and I told you to close your eyes, and I guess find your ears, you can't turn and look at them. And I move all five cars to the exact same place, there's a spot that they were before. But take this car and move it here, and I can move here. Can you tell the difference that I moved the car? No, because it looks exactly the same. They're all the same looking car, right? But if I had a Honda Civic here and a Ford Mustang here, and I told you to close your eyes and cover your ears, and I thought to you, you'd be like, yeah, you moved it. Right? So you have to watch if they're different cars or not the same, but if they're the same model, then they are the same. So we have five different models of black cars. That basically means you have five different cars in front of you. It doesn't matter if they're all black, right? They all look the same. And then you have four different models of red cars. So you have five cars of black cars. Or park next to each other in a parking garage. If a black car has to be first and a red car has to be last, I could do it. I was like teeny, so I didn't find those happening for me. So we have nine car nine cars total, right? I'm gonna line up my car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have to do my restrictions first. Black car first, red car last. So whenever I have a restriction, I write it here. So this has to be a black car, and this has to be a red car. I have to do those first. Ones in between, we don't care what color they are, right? Just those two. So in the first place, how many options do I actually have? Some people say nine cars, but I don't have nine cars. Five options. Now this is you can't. You're correct though. You have five options, but how many cars did I want to leave there? How many cars did I park there? So you only have five options of cars. How many cars did I park there? In this spot. One. Yes. You only have one car there. People say the park car. Wait a minute, it's one slot, you just do five options of park car, and you just park one. So there's really only one car there, right? There's only eight car options left for the rest of the life, correct? Not four, which is what some people do in that car here. Okay? So I have five options here, but I only leave one black car here. So I technically have eight cars left for the rest of the flight. If I kept all five here, I have four cars left for the eight left of the four. Right? Now I have to move the red one, so that's my next restriction. How many options of red cars do I have to find? Four. How many cars do I leave here, though? One. So, Although I had five options for the first one and four options for the last spot, I really have only parked how many cars? Two, right? You only parked two cars total. So you can fill the rest of my plan order you want. I was going to select right to my four cars total. Um, but now I can fill these in because are not restricted. It doesn't matter what car I have. So how many options of cars do I have left for this space? I parked one, I parked two. Part one is part two, six, seven, six is the right. Seven. Okay, you're correct. Because I took two off of the total of nine, but my head is up in the So seven left. Now I part one of those seven, but how many do I have Six. Then I part one here, how many I have left? Five. Then four. Then three. Then two. Then one. Okay? Because it was my card, I think oh, that that was fine. So I have, I have five options of black here, but I left one. I have four 
talking to Red here, but I left one. So I have left two cards here. I have seven left. Seven, then I leave one. Six, then I leave one. Five, four, six, one. Right? Now it's your side. We're going to multiply them or add them. Give me a high this card right here. Five, four, six, one. 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 Okay, I'll pay you zero, three, zero, zero dollars. You'll be like, 
So here, same question, but um, you can't repeat. So it says, Eric is going to be assigned to task to determine how many odd or digit numbers, so just in case before, there are which have no repeating digits. When it has no repeating digits, I believe it's extremely imperative to write the options below the point. It will make life easier. So, just write a straight table. So, one, two, three, four. This one can be one, three, five, or seven, or nine. This one can't be zero. We know that much. Right? I'm going to start off with the back. How many options do I have in the back room? The text with no repeating digits is now I pretend like I'm going to pick a number and I keep it. Okay, so us one, three, five, seven, or nine, what number are we going to pretend to keep? Uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. So now I've kept three here. If I put three here, it no longer can appear in anything underneath here. It can't be an option. I've used it up. Okay? If you pick one instead of three, you no longer could write the ones underneath one because you've used it up. If you pick nine, then you can no longer write nine under any of these ones. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter which one you pick, I just press the one and pick it. Don't spend lots of time deciding. Okay? So now I have three there. I can't have zero here, so let's look at the options I have left. One, two, I can't look through because I have to keep it there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So instead of having nine options for a first play, how many do I actually have? Eight. Now, once again, I have to pretend to keep one of them here. Sam, what do you want to keep? Um, Doesn't matter. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, I'm just going to keep four. So now four is here. I can't use it. So now for this one, I have one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What can I not forget? Everyone forgets this. So they just have three options. You all have zero. You didn't use zero here. This is all. You couldn't use zero here. You couldn't. You will have zero here. Everyone forgets that you still have zero. You haven't used it, right? Because you weren't allowed to use it. Right? You just have the options. So, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't tell you how many people wrote eight and seven, right? Just because you forget. If you're somebody who would have thought that zero, you read the little note in the star in your note saying, don't forget this. Zero is going to miss it. I would have forgotten it. And give yourself a little note with the star, right? So when you go back to you, these are actually useful for you, okay? Always, always, always in your notes, mark stuff that you would have made with you, right? Now, now, which one do you want to keep that? One, two, three, four, five, five. So now I have one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, and I still have zero, so I have seven options. And I'm going to pretend it's equal one. So one of the options could be four, five, one, two. Would any of those repeat? No, they're going to zero. Okay? I like doing the circle and boxing game just because then I can physically see what numbers I have left. Okay? You could say, okay, well, I have five, I know there's like ten options here, I can't one here, I can't have a zero, so I have eight options. You can do that, that's absolutely fine. I find it interesting. Okay? Now, when it's an odd number, this is easier. When it's an odd number, you go back and forth and find this number. And that's just now that we're actually going to do an even number. And an even number, you always do. Okay? So. We're going to example nine for now, and we'll come back. Now to example nine. So it's an extension example five. Eric has now been told to determine how many even four-digit numbers there are. So what's the change here? Even four-digit numbers. The back numbers can be zero, two, four, six, or eight, right? You have to watch yourself go. You always, 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 if it's um, this one here, we can repeat, it doesn't matter. If then you can't repeat, then you're going to get a few cases. So let's do it where you can repeat. You can repeat. So we have one, two, three, four. This can't be a zero. We said that before. This has to be 
two, four, six, eight, or zero. Right? Cool. When when you have repeating digits, you don't have to pick a number, right? Because you can repeat everything. It doesn't really matter what number you pick and stuff there, because I can repeat it again. So you're learning to do the circling thing like you've done the last time, it's because you can't repeat that thing. Um, all right. So I have five options for the back one. This one I have the option one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I still have nine options. And then how many do I have for the middle? So not surprisingly, we have the same exact amount of even forty numbers as we have off, right? Now we have how many even four digit numbers? Where you have no repeated digits. Now, please don't write this part just wrong. Because it's going to be wrong. If you write it over, it's going to be wrong. So say I treat it like I treated the last one. You don't write this one. I treat it as one case. So I say 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Correct? So I have 5. Let's pretend I keep the 0 here. Okay? I can't have 0 here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have 9 options. So I keep the 1 here. Now I can have a 0 here, correct? 0. Uh, I can have what? 2, 3. I can have, yeah, I can have a 0. So I have a 0 already, right? So I have to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Does that make sense for if I pick a zero? What happens though if I didn't pick zero for the back number and I pick the two? So I have to pick two instead. Or four or six or eight. Okay. Still have five options here. I pick the two instead. So how many options do I have for this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not nine anymore. Right? What could come back here now? The two's out. Right? Let's say the one's out. But now a zero could come back here. So you'd have to do two cases. You have to do a case where the back number is zero, or you have to do a case where the back number is two, four, six, or eight. Because it totally changes your number often. You have to always do two cases when it's no repeating digits. When it's even, only even. If it's odd, you don't repeat it. If it's even because of the zero, you have and no repeating digits, you have to do two cases. It is not an option. You have to do two cases. Because now it's like, oh, five. There's too many, it changes the volume if you pick a zero or if you pick a two, four, six, or eight. It totally does. So, and you'll see in a minute when I do two. So, case one, you have numbers of zero. Page two, my back number is two, four, six, or eight. Whenever you have cases, you add them. You add the answers. You don't decide. Because you have this case or you have this case. You can't have both cases or you have to have two four digit numbers. Correct? You have this case or this case. And because you use the word or, you're going to add the cases. So the moment you have some cases, you have to add them. You could be at this case or this case. If you have both cases, you have to have two four digit numbers. They're not asking you to find two four digit numbers. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So let's do them separately then. Let's do, let's do this one first. Both of these stand for the zero starting. Let's do uh, the case one where the back number is zero. How many options do I have for this one? One, uh, zero. Now zero stable is the only option I have. Okay. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine options. Uh, I'm going to pretend to keep one here. 
Now if you put zero and you use a one, so I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. You pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You put zero, you pick one, and I have to pen it to the two here. Now I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight. What's nine times eight times seven? Eight times seven. Everyone else get that? Plus? Now we do a case where our back number is equal to 6. So now instead of having one option back, I actually have 4. I'm going to keep the 2 here. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do I have a 2? Nope. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, You have to use separate cases when it's non repeating, even when it's easy for it. Okay? Because there's a zero problem. Okay, I'm going to give you some homework and I'm going to come up later. So we do check the one that's listed in the first on the very last one. And like I said, this is a direct uh, unit of the last one. So we have to check on the next one. And then we'll take some other questions. So on page 524, so on page 524, This is really rare to have this little, but it is the first thing I'm going to use. You will always need the textbook every day. 